This one is called A New Era of Gotcha Games from Mr. Genizad himself. Let's see what he has to say. Let's pretend for a moment that you're a normal person, so... <laughs> well, I wouldn't be watching this video about gotcha games if I'm a normal person, but he said pretend, so let's tr try to pretend to be normal, guys. Someone who likely isn't watching this video right now, and you're walking <laughs> around your city, and you see this ad. Jesus! Find it odd. Wait, 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 what? And you see... Good googly moogly. Listen, Brown Dust, I still think, is the worst possible name for a gotcha game or any game. When I think about brown dust, I immediately think about shit particles. Why would you associate your name of a game with such a nasty thing, right? It doesn't matter how good your game is, the first thing your audience sees is the name of the game, brown dust. Shit, it was so bad, they made brown dust too. And, and just change the fucking name, listen. <laughs> the, the, the waifus, the, the, the arts, it's looking pretty nice. This ad. Would you find it odd? Many might find it inappropriate for children to see in such a public place. Oh, absolutely. This is actually the censored version, which are. Jesus Christ. What the? What's happening here? Goddess of Victory and Nike, I know, but like, this top is here. What is this? Is this the censorship? How are they censored? So, it's, 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 is this supposed to be showing like under boob here? It's water drop. Do they show nipples? What's the original source material? Arguably makes it look a lot worse than it actually is. And there <laughs> The water chops are just basically hiding the cleavage. <laughs> there are even some crazier ads out there for some games, but a lot of grippers. us are already look really desensitized to seeing something like this. Yeah. Frankly, it's already a bit absurd that- I spent 70,000 in FG. Only 70,000, bro? We watched this video, I think. Did we? No, no, no. I, I, I forget, actually. But this guy, 70k on FG was honestly light work. This is like a moderate dolphin. It's not even whale territory, especially for a game like FGO, bro. Talk to me when you're six figures deep. That what's basically a gambling game is legal to advertise publicly, even to children. And Brown does to age rating will be changed from 12 plus to 17 plus. Damn, well, I mean, I don't think that the average kid should just be exposed to so much big booba, but let's not get it twisted. When I was 12 and if I see gotcha game big booba girls like this, I would be very interested. Isn't rated as 18 plus. However, if you've been paying attention Jesus. to gotchas at all, you may have been noticing a more <laughs> common trend. The coomerfication of gotcha games. The coomerfication of gotcha games. And I don't think this is necessarily specific to gotcha. Sex definitely sells, and this is just an element not specific to gaming, but arts, media, anything, right? Pan Piano, for example. Y'all know who Pan Piano is, right? Little... Pan Piano! Everybody knows Pan Piano, right? Because she creates content, but the thumbnails are oh my goodness, right? And it gets the views. It gets the eyes attracted, right? People see Coomer content, they want to click on it because guess what? How many of the people of the audience, like what do you think the demographic is? Lonely, horny men that are desperate and are looking for some sort of parasocial connection online. By leaning into the sex appeal, of course you're going to get more views. But it's not just that, right? You have to actually have good content beyond that. So Pam Piano's marketing is genius. She plays into the loot cosplays. She retweets all the hate tweets about, wow, this girl is selling her body. Look how shameless she is. She retweets that shit with like a smiley face. More coomers engage with it. It's an infinite fucking glitch, man. Making all the characters more appealing to the eyes, removing more clothing, and mm -hmm. increasing their proportions. And I'm not against it, I'm merely pointing it out here. Now, gacha games have always been this way since time immemorial, way back when during the gacha big bang. We've had games like Fate Grand Order mm -hmm. and Grand Blue Fantasy near the beginning, trailblazers of the genre, both of which have some risque designs, eventually leading to some next level Coomer titles Woo! like Azure Lane and now Hazard Lane, yeah, where's Blue Archive? Snow Break, which Jesus. are hard to say is anything other than just softcore hentai, but now we're starting to see some of this become more mainstream and popular, yeah. and yeah. I'll explain the reason why. The main I think it's just money, right? Do you want to, like, the main... How, how does gacha games work? First, let's think about this. For people that's not even aware of how gacha games work, right? Microtransaction model. Right? These gotcha games take less money to develop than AAA titles. 
yet they can make way more money. If you look at the statistics of a gacha game revenue versus PC and console games combined, gacha has overcome, like, it's like doubling that shit, I'm pretty sure. I forget the exact numbers, it's way more. And why is that? Because gambling is very addicting. Especially in Asia, where the spending culture for gacha games, especially that's where the biggest market is. If you look at the um, sensory tower revenue, it's always like Chinese market, Japanese markets, right? Global audience, there they are there, but the whaling culture is a lot more accepted in over in Asia. And why do they do that? Well, think about who the average gacha gamer is. Yes, there's definitely. Uh, I, I think that there's definitely uh, more games targeted for kids to be immediately introduced to this whole gambling perspective in microtransactions to kind of like mold them at a young age so that they can, you know, grow up and be more prone to gambling. But back in my day, because I'm such a fucking boomer, it wasn't really like that. You pay, you know, a flat amount for a game, then you get that shit. But it turns out that when you grow up, you have less time to actually play games. You have more, right? You're busy with the daytime job. You have relationships. You have other big boy things to do. And in those moments, what's actually nice is you have less time, but more money. Disposable income then gets converted into microtransactions as you play gacha games, which are basically autoplay. You don't have to actually play it. It's all about resource management and just kind of playing it on the side. A lot of office workers, right? A lot of lonely single men in their, in their mid-20s, right? Getting out of college and getting into their big boy job. A lot of lonely, depressed people are looking for some sort of cope. And gotcha games wailing on the fucking waifus are definitely the most, like, the most, the most optimal way to get money. And do you want to sell fucking ugly girls? No! You want to sell big booby, big ass girls, right? Sex sells. It's a whole fucking industry built on preying upon the weakness of human beings, the loneliness, the desperation, and getting them hooked on gambling. This become more mainstream and popular, and I'll explain the reason why. The main reason for this would be money. I am never mm -hmm. gonna financially recover from this. But there's actually more to it than that, and yeah. a huge reason that most people don't realize, which we'll be explaining over the course of the video. Really? Well, I thought that making girls more sexy is going to make more people pull, right? It's going to get more eyes on it. Sex sells, but beyond money, what other element is there? This has actually led to male character removal in some games up to the insane situation of gotcha players taking down an entire governmental what? agency, which we'll be explaining later <laughs> what? on in the video. So what are the causes of coomification and gotchas, and where do we go from here? That's what I want to cover in this video. All if right. you enjoy it, consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll be making more videos like this. I think most of us have heard the phrase before, sex sells. And Absolutely. oh boy does it, especially in anime gacha games. Players froth at the mouth to get their next super hot waifu and buy yep. a bikini skin, sending these games profits to the moon. But I would never such a depraved thing oh now, come on china, man they have super strict rules about sexual contents oh yeah the censorship in china is fucking crazy but one of the funniest things about the chinese censorship uh you remember when they decided to censor blood in anime because blood is red it's bad we need to make it pg-13 let's make blood white and now you just have a bunch of girls panting and moaning on the ground dripping in white blood that makes it look way worse bro so you may think, well, things must be pretty tame then, right? Wrong. Remember that both Azur Lane and Snowbreak originate from China, and they okay. are peak Woo! degeneracy. But how can this be possible? Simple. They just censor the games in China, but release them in their fully near-naked glory to the rest of the world. You may remember that in Genshin Impact. At That's right, right. Yellow armpits, bro. Anyone with like a little belly button showing, right? Cleavids are hidden in China, but in the global audience, we get to see it. At one point, they added alternate outfits for the standard characters, yep. like Mona and... Like, look at this shit. That like, like, like... I, I was so mad at the, 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 the Yelan one, but look at this. Like, it's Chinese version. Or is my face... No, my face is in the way. Look at the top here, right? This isn't even cleavage. Jean isn't even showing cleavage, but it's like, oh, haram! How dare you show your pale chest, you demon? Cover that shit up here. Outfits for the standard. Over here, Mona, basically leggings, right? You got like a leotard, like bodysuit here, but it's like, no, we're gonna put her in thigh highs instead. But you still show the skin? 
I, this is this honestly this kind of makes it look a little bit more sexy this is the absolute zone right the zero shiki territory for characters like mona and jean that covered let's see the shoulders oh you slut cover those shoulders up oh my god and fishnets no fishnets allowed in china them up more well these are the basic skins in china and you have no choice but to use them people will also often report game companies to the government if they're pissed at something in game and then blame it on things like it being too sexual to get the company in hot water chinese player reported game on steam just making fun of xi man the ccp regime goes crazy huh like of course i don't know what like the sentiment of like chinese you know adults are like 20 to 30s i don't know if they're like super woke and say fuck xi jinping or if they're like glory to you know the motherland I, I i don't know but there's gonna be always snitches i guess water with the government you can also look up the bunny girl incident in honkai third as an example <laughs> bunny now, girl incident? i don't even get how you're supposed to censor azulane at this point put a whole ass trash bag over them but whatever gotcha games have always been more male focused even yes. though you know half the planet is female however I think I, I have actually seen some gacha games where it's just all femboys, yaoi stuff, or super bara, just like jacked hairy dudes on each other. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if, like, clearly those games aren't making a lot of money if they're now not spoken of, but, you know, male, the biggest audience online is a bunch of horny young males, right? And it makes sense why you want to lean into the sexy waifus to capture that market, but I think there is a huge... Uh, potential loss, right? Because, you know, half the population, females, you hit them too, like, give them what they want. Half the planet is female. However, recently we've been seeing more male characters in the average gacha, especially with the release Plus of Bandos. Genshin Impact, which featured more male characters than most other gacha games. And as it turns out, Women People love are it. just as horny as men for these PNGs. This Absolutely. This has also led to more female-focused gacha. <laughs> Wait, is Tectone streaming right now? Hold up. Yo, Techie. <laughs> he is <laughs> the title i am gay. i am gay he's not playing it though because <laughs> he's in the love and deep space why what the hell is happening right now <laughs> they're fucking playing love and deep space which is the game that this is from right this love and deep space <laughs> contains sexual things it's <laughs> what the fuck are you showing me here? Anyway, let's go back to the video. Let's go back to the let's go back to the video. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Watch a game such as Love and Deep Space, which yeah. is succeeding because of this untapped market of games. Damn! Then three tower! 42 mil. Shit! Dude, it's above HSR. I think HSR and Genshin right now, it's kind of slow. Of course, Natline just drops. So we got to wait for that. But HSR has been pretty slow. So the numbers make sense. Walder went wave down here. It's pretty sad. But number two, love and deep space. A lot of girls horny for them fanboys, man. It was and for women. And if you thought birth rates were bad now, then how am I even supposed to compete with that? You're not. Don't worry, Jenna. You know why? Because in about... Five to ten years, I believe that we will reach AGI. Just like Sword Art Online, you too will be given your own government-sanctioned waifu bot named Alice Synthesis 30. And you can customize her all you want and live your dreams. You don't need to be like this. And then the girls will also get their robot that looks like these husbandos, right? And then what's gonna happen? Human population will face extinction, no one's having babies, and then the robots will take over even supposed to compete with that unfortunately a lot of men are not very happy about this kind of competition in their games which leads us to what do you mean competition in these games most of the male gacha players in china don't like the idea of this competition system that's led to an entire movement all chinese dudes are thinking these chinese husbandos are too hot and they cannot compete with idealized 2D husbandos and the 3D girls are saying, no, I don't want you, and they're mad? Is that, is that what's going on? ...of competition in their games, which leads us to one of the big problems <laughs> plaguing Chinese gotchas at the moment. Censorship. NTR. Now, if you don't cucked. know what NTR is, well, it's being cucked. Mm -hmm. Having your PNG waifu stolen from you by a much more handsome and attractive individual and I want you to let you know, right? All your favorite waifus. Right now, we're watching ReZero. Rem is your waifu. Emily is your waifu. Listen, this guy right now in the anime is getting cucked by this handsome blonde dude on a horse. 
But you're getting cucked in the anime right now. But realize that every second that passes, another white, your favorite waifu, a hundred degenerate, sweaty neckbeards, weebs, are busting a nut every minute that passes. So don't think like you have some sort of ownership or monopoly over your favorite waifu. They don't exist yet. Attractive individual who probably even showers or walks outside of their oh room. Oh my god, more than showers! Once a day. Something completely unachievable, unobtainable in the modern era. But where does NTR come into play? Well, one of the recent incidents was a year ago, okay. and essentially a character in Genshin named Wanderer was really popular among female Genshin players, yeah. but hated by male ones because he's very arrogant and just a total jerk, really. Hey, he needs to be corrected, cocky little kid. You're so happy just to see the sun again. How childish. There were already some tensions lurking below due to having so many male banner characters introduced in the Sumeru region, which many players dislike. Tensions eventually exploded with this character's story, leading to a ton of male gacha gamers to become enraged. That what, are, what are they mad about? They're about Wander's drama, a glimpse into the Chinese toxic community. Today is my work day. Yeah, I know it's Saturday in China, so I didn't pay. Well, you know, 996, every day you work in. I didn't pay much attention to social media. However, minutes ago, I logged into my social media and some people told me I've been doxxed. What? Male guy. In light of the Wander controversy, why Genshin villains get hate for being villains, not counting Miko. I get hate for being an actual evil in the story. Child, I wasn't even that evil. You too. What's going on? Why are people mad? They're polygons. Are dudes literally upset that, like, there is hot anime boys that girls are thirsting over and the guys feel like they got cucked? Like, what, what, what is this? Just to become enraged that they were having their game destroyed and potential waifus being taken from them by what? this guy. Not actual girls, but, like, the Genshin Impact waifus. Like, like, let's say they have their favorite waifu. And their favorite waifu is now interacting with Scaramouche and they have some sort of nice thing going on. And then the player feels like they got cucked. That is like another level of mental illness that like, it's not even real, first of all, right? If it happened in real life for sure, but I guess because these are such lonely misfits of like socially inept degenerates, they feel like their only way to get girls is through fucking gotcha game waifus. And then a character shows up taking their waifus from them and they feel like, <laughs> why do I play this game? Mr. Mihoyo, you can't do this to me. Guy. A 10 year old looking kid with a big funny hat. The literal personification of sex appeal. The god of Riz. No woman can resist him. This is what peak performance looks like. If you're not only losing to a PNG, but this PNG out of all of them, you really have no game and you're probably gonna- Yeah, I mean, the, the whole appeal, the girls like him because he's kind of like a- He's not really a Shota, but he's got that feminine, young, femboy appeal, right? A lot of girls like that shit. A lot of dudes like this shit too, but if you feel like you got cucked by Scaramouche because your favorite waifu in the game is with him, that's so sad and pathetic. To the point, you need to just like, go look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, your biggest problem in life right now is a non- it's it's a fictional character in a video game, like like think about how insane this concept is. Holy shit, we're cooked. PNG out of all of them, you really have no game, and you're probably gonna die alone. So a ton of players hated this guy, right? Well, then he committed the worst crime of all. He uh -oh. interacted with a character called Nida, and she pitied. You know, this is not so different from the VTubing culture, like Hololive, right? Hololive, um, there's a huge uh, controversy with male and female um, talents interacting with each other. Like, no, get away from my main girl. How dare you speak to my wife? Ooh, don't let this happen. No. <laughs> oh my God. Nahida. Nahida is Skarimushi's. <sighs> so you telling me that it's just a bunch of degenerate lollycons <laughs> wanted Nahida and then Scaramouche and Nahida interact that's even fucking worse <laughs> bunch of fucking pseudo pedophiles getting upset that another kid has taken their kid bro <laughs> him and wanted to help him so now you had yeah. the ntr men and the lollycons teaming up to display their hate 
they did things like hurting animals that supposedly reminded them of wander what i mean back in the day justin bieber y'all know justin bieber some girls are so fucking obsessed with the guy they would like cut their wrist and post their pictures on Facebook and Twitter saying cutting for Bieber too. You know, that, that's the level of like intensity of loyalty they had. But like, this is like, <sighs> yeah, just remember, just, just remember how stupid the average person is and realize that half of them are even dumber than that, right? This world is full of retards. Whether you like it or not, you live with them and there's a lot of lonely, terminally online, just mentally ill people that are willing to do shit like this because their favorite video game waifu is no longer theirs. Them of Wander, Doxy Mihoyo employees, a classic. That's Spamming sad. Spamming the community with hate, also a classic. Harassing the VAs, even reporting the character to the government. Government. Which, like, what the hell are they gonna <laughs> ban? Mr. Xi Jinping! Nahida's getting stolen from me by Scaramouche, please do something! Wander with a law? Now seeing the hatred in this one instance helps paint the picture of how many of these players feel, but it's far from the end of the NTR train. So then another game comes Girls along Front called Line. Girls Frontline 2. All and right. admittedly, the company behind it, Mika, doesn't have an amazing reputation for many reasons. Possibly also having to do with the beta version of the game that when uninstalled, bricks your entire computer with what? no chance of recovery. But the game itself- That is- what the fuck? Your entire heart? That's gotta be intentional. No, why would it be intentional? Out of spite? That's crazy from a business perspective. It's just a stupid ass bug? That's crazy. Recovery. But the game itself looks nice. Maybe it's got some issues though. It's basically XCOM with super high quality looking waifu characters. Nice. The game releases and it's going all right other than a bunch of smaller dramas and some gameplay problems. But hey, it's probably- Sorry, um, I'm getting distracted, but 629 right now. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's go back to this. I just thought of an example. So in the Genshin Inazuma Archon Quest, I know this is not Inazuma. This is Sumeru shit. But in the Archon Quest, main character Traveler and Ayaka have a pretty intimate story quest. They, she even performs for us, right? And people are saying, oh my god, it's a ship, it's a ship. But did people get mad at that situation? No, right? Because they self-insert themselves as the Traveler. And they think that they're phasing through the main character to interact with Ayaka, their waifu. In this situation with, you know, uh, Scaramouche and Nahida, why are they not self-inserting themselves as Scaramouche? 99% of the guys pick Lumine? Hmm. Maybe that is the case. So they're... So hold the fuck up. If we assume that everyone picked Lumine and that's the reason why they don't feel cucked, they're basically phasing in, so it's like, it's like a self-insert lesbian relationship, right? Because you're a guy, but you pick Lumine, you're self-inserting yourself as Lumine, and Lumine is a girl in the game, and Lumine and Ayaka, both girls, have an intimate moment. So now you are transcending <laughs> your sexuality. You be, I, this is getting weird. Is this trans-lesbian shit? I'm, I'm not too sure about this anymore, but... I, I guess they're fine with so so if Scaramouche was a girl and they had some nice interaction with Naya, they'd be fine with it. So <laughs> it's, it's all fucked, okay. okay. So, so they're fine with being cucked by a girl? Like like they're they're fine with being cucked by a girl. Cause that's what's happening, right? I don't know. This 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 there's no consistency here, but if we try to understand the logic of the people, it's it's about the core problem is the self-insert. The fact that Scaramouche does not represent them, or it's just a guy, while Lumine and Naida, uh, sorry, Ayaka, that's perfectly fine. Looks nice. Maybe it's- Yeah, they just want to see girl-on-girl -girl action. I think it's just simply that, right? So when it comes to, like, girl-on-girl -girl action, Yuri suddenly, it being cucked doesn't matter anymore because the Yuri overrides that. 
But <laughs> if it's not, then it's like, oh no. It's got some issues though. It's basically XCOM with super high quality looking waifu characters. Nice. The game releases and it's going all right other than a bunch of smaller dramas and some gameplay problems. But hey, it's probably better than the Wuthering Waves launch. Then they put up a... <laughs> Wuthering Waves launch will never fucking <laughs> escape the memes. And honestly, it was a fucking disastrous launch. Albeit the developers did listen very pro, uh, very often. They, they, they did, you know, address the bugs and patches and they gave us a lot of rewards. But that launch week was, whew. A beta build for an upcoming patch for the character Diane. This is where all hell broke loose. Okay. She now wore a lightning pendant. Hold up. Where'd she get this? <gasps> it's a this boy! Guy. His name is Raymond. Supposedly in the story, they talk a lot to each other. He looks like a background character from the anime Cells at Work, and he's also banging your girl. Damn, well, let's get it, Raymond! Anyways, the community goes ballistic. Everyone's review bombing, content creators are memeing the game. That is actually so. I didn't even realize the depth of the this, like degeneracy, because like when I see gotcha drama, it's usually around like fucking content creators, right? We see Tectone here, the whole fucking Atsu Tectone, Enviosity, all that shit. How fun was that drama, man? Ooh, 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 ooh. But beyond that, I never realized how much drama there was about the players getting upset about how their favorite waifus are getting fucked by another character in the game is insane game all over raymond is probably claiming another one of your girls let's go raymond we speak shut it down Sh so why can you not hey this is a fucking rack uh records of akashic record yeah akashic records uh shironeko oh, we just saw this a couple months ago but why can they not self-insert them as raymond right like in anime, so let's think about this, right? Let's, let's take ReZero for example, because we're watching ReZero a lot right now. A lot of people simp for Amelia, a lot of people simp for, you know, Rem, right? But no one gets mad when Subaru gets with them, right? Because they're self-inserting? But in this situation, why does the audience not self-insert them as Raymond and think that you're fucking your waifu? Because at the heart of these people, they realize that they are not Raymond. Raymond is too cool. Raymond is hot. I could never be Raymond. Because he's a background character? Then even better, most of the losers playing these games are fucking background characters in life. Accomplishing fucking nothing. Seeking out gacha games and a fucking 2D JPEG to fill the void in their heart. Perfect. You can fucking self-insert yourself as a loser in the game. And Raymond's getting bitches. They should fucking feel compelled they should feel like hyped up what like, like why in anime do people not get upset about it but gotcha games there's a deeper level of parasocial interactions huh it, it's a difference of the gotcha game in the anime because like i don't hear people getting upset about their favorite wife who's getting fucked by a different main, main character but suddenly gotcha games their favorite wife who does it and it's a bad thing this is very interesting psychology man Content creators are memeing the game all over. Raymond is probably claiming another one of your girls as we speak. Shut it down. Shut down everything. Well, then supposedly the company did an apology. Because it's about money. Good point you're bringing up. Okay, let's think about this. Because they spent $100 multiple packs. 500. They lost a 50-50. Fuck it. They got C2 fucking girl. Whatever. They spent the money. And now that girl should be mine. In an anime, you don't do that. You never spend money for the anime. Well, maybe you spend it on different platform fees like Crunchyrolls and whatnot. By the way, fuck Crunchyroll. You shouldn't buy that shit. Garbage service. But maybe there is the money aspect of it, right? Because I'm trying to figure out why don't people get upset at anime like this? But gacha games, they're such a crazy, crazy fucking culture. And most gacha players do watch anime, right? There's a huge overlap between the two. It's maybe just a lot of a thing with the money. The community hated it. They also possibly bought reviews. The community hated that too. They even apparently changed Raymond to a female character. <laughs> and remember, right? The example of Lumine and Ayaka. That's fine. Because girl on girl action. I am no longer getting cucked by Raymond. I'm getting cucked by this girl. And suddenly the Yuri overrides the NTR. So it's fine. Just removing him entirely. This overall irreparably destroyed the game's reputation. The catastrophic event severely damaged the game's reputation. The company's revenue plotted from 1.9 million 
to 550,000 in six months. Damn. And that's what happens when, you know, you don't, you give the audience what they want, don't want, I guess. It, are, are they reaping what they're sowing? Kind of in a sense, but goddamn, that is crazy. The amount of people that actually feel hurt that their JPEG waifu that they spent money on is getting fucked by another character in a game. And they can't even self-insert them as that character because they're too cool and, and they're losers in life and I don't know, man. Reputation until today, and it almost looked like the end of service for it. But fortunately, it seems to be coming to the West as well. So okay. I guess we can see if the game's actually an NTR simulator. I'm ready to get cucked. Now, you may also <laughs> have heard of a game that's gonna be a very good clip material. A game called Azure Promilia, a highly anticipated game of an amazing open world where you can explore and oh no, concept art was leaked for a male character. Uh -oh. The fans went ballistic on Billy Billy. Male character! Answers, not wanting to be cucked once again. There's so much cucking going on over there. Man. It's just really showing me how much of like pathetic losers most gotcha players are and i play a lot of gotcha games and i don't want to act like i'm better than you but i never have thought once that a female character that i like in a game interacting with something else was something that i should take personal offense for people are so invested they truly believe that like the fucking jpegs that you see on screen is your soulmate because again these gotcha games just attract the worst type of people lonely desperate people that have a void in their heart and are willing to spend thousands of dollars to just get a fucking JPEG. And at the core of it, it's just a loneliness. It's just a bunch of young males, probably old males too, right? That have, are just treated as like outcasts of society. They've done nothing with their lives. Straight up just isekai main characters before they get fucking isekai'd. Just a bunch of Rudius's IRL before being isekai'd. Like the degeneracy truly goes deep. There, it's no wonder they have over a billion people at this. Like, like when you feel cuck like that, you are literally self-reporting how much of a loser you are, right? You are. Like, you're getting mad that a fucking male character in a video game is fucking, a, like, potentially fucking your girl in a video. But you get mad at that because you have phased yourself into this game, thinking that girl is real. That's the level of degeneracy we're at right now this point well then the company had to make a formal statement to assure them no see i'm the opposite these are ntr haters i are i am ntr enjoyers i get hyped when i see my favorite genshin impact girl getting run a train by five hill curls at once mm -hmm. and i say amazing fan art likes i don't think myself as getting cooked I see fan art of Yelan just getting a train run on her by like a mega, mega hill churl. And I'm like, this is great content. Amazing. Because my brain is broken, but I've never made the association of, oh my God, Yelan is mine. I can't believe these hill curls are doing these things to Yelan, right? I, I, I don't know. Male characters would be added to the game to stop all of the rioting. As you can see, this appears to be a common issue in the gacha community in China, and now many games are afraid of making male characters in general for their games. Not only do they often sell less, but now they can get you into hot water with the fans. Male characters in games are dangerous oh waters. So what does it mean here? Male characters are potential to piss off your community and, entire, and ruin your entire game. So what do you do then? Let's take the recent Concord example, right? Concord was a failed project after hyping up for eight years saying this is for the modern audience. The current video game audience is a bunch of coomers. They do not represent what true modern audience wants and we're gonna deliver something they want. And it failed. It's getting less than 50 player views. It's getting a full refund. The project is canceled. What a fucking embarrassment. And that's what happens when a, comp when a company goes in to go against the interest of their target audience. In this example then, the target audience don't want dudes. You need to satisfy their fantasies, right? From a pure business perspective, I'm not saying whether or not this is a good thing. If you wanna make money for gacha games and this is your culture, this is your community, you just have to give them what they want, I guess. What are you gonna do? Go on a fucking, just go against them? Just piss them off, try to feel like you're gonna change, like have a paradigm shift in the community? I don't think that's gonna happen. 
just when they were starting to get introduced into games more. But where should the fans turn to? Please, God. I need a game with a self-insert character and only hot women. No disgusting men that can see them except for me. Welcome to our Coomer Messiah. Okay. Snow break containment. Snow break containment zone. All right. Let's see what this game's about. Zone. We have hit literal peak design oh. and story. The so only girls exist. No guys exist. Mona Lisa of gaming. A game so shameless. It became renowned for its absurd outfits and its groundbreaking story Oof. of you canonically starting a harem. Well, I see a guy there, right? And also canonically marrying multiple <laughs> of these girls. It's part Whoa. of the lore. It's Whoa. completely natural. <laughs> Meaning all right y'all want to start maybe we should start streaming this game guys oh my goodness if you don't marry multiple girls at the same time you are literally not playing the game correctly what is this plot of the game like you are the only male left in this apocalyptic world and you need to impregnate all these waifus to save humanity but the game wasn't always like this originally it was just a third person shooter gotcha game with okay. some waifu characters and it was steadily going towards end of service it was like the titanic it had run into an iceberg it was leaking money every single month it was dipping below one million dollars a month things weren't looking amazing then around in april they had a genius idea uh -oh. let's make the ultimate coomer game remove 70 percent of clothing and create a first person dorm system dear god we've done it Scantily clad wedding costumes, check. Dorm systems where you can interact with the characters in a first person and even massage them. <laughs> massage room! <laughs> There's a massage room, bro! Check. Snowbreak reported that 70% of its <gasps> revenue is from PC. And the July mobile game- Wow! That is amazing. Because of the nature of gotcha games and how it's mobile games, but the PC client, right? Seven mil, like 70% all through PC? Sweaty. The revenue tracker estimates around $7 million. This game's popping up every month now. Snowbreak became so infamous, it's become a common term to describe games going the Snowbreak route. Huh. When they start to go full Coomer, gaming is saved. As you can see, there Whoa. appears to be a... <laughs> well... FGO has some crazy designs too, but I don't see Mama Raiko just like moving like this, you know? I, like Mama Raiko, ooh, that design is fucking crazy, but like this is... Goddamn, Nornium, huh? Noted, Nornium. A lot of popularity recently with Coomer Gotchas. We even have a game called Nornium coming up and holy what a cultured game. They even named their beta a foreplay test and yeah. <laughs> Early access to the four playtest, guys! Yeah, this game's also gonna be on Steam. Thanks, Gaben. So, China not only seems to have an underlying dislike for male characters in gotcha games, but also loves scantily clad female characters. So what- Well, yeah, because, you know, sex sells, right? You just want to make super hot girls, big booba, and ways to interact with them in funny ways. In the lobby, you point them, they make all these ee -ee -ee noises, and then their titties bounce around, you get to fucking massage them now. Wow. It's like- you have a real girlfriend, guys! What kind of games do you think we'll be seeing more of in the near future? More now let's Coomer move games. a bit around Asia and now focus on South Korea. Hey! That's my homeland! South Korea number one! Sorry, that's just, that's supposed to be Taiwan number one. There was one big incident... I Blue Archive. So the incident I know has to do with Blue Archive about how there was a huge lawsuit that dealt with how much censorship there is in games, we won that shit, and now, Epic 7, you know, Blue Arc, like, we are getting the craziest Coomer designs. I wanted to go over that I teased earlier in the video, how degenerate gotcha players defeated the government. Yeah. During the last year, 2023, South Korea began to really crack down on sexualized games. The Game Rating and Administration Committee, GRAC, is a government agency that essentially rates games and determines what ages are allowed to play them, <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> like a corporate executive meeting, and the guy has a fucking PowerPoint presentation of just like, this is good, this is bad, hips too wide. Oh my god, is that a tan line? Could you <laughs> Let's think about it in like important business meeting with a bunch of dudes in suits trying to take this shit seriously. <laughs> Similar to the ESRB in the West. For anyone who doesn't know, porn is banned in South Korea. 
Yeah, porn is banned. Honestly, OnlyFans creators too in Korea, um, there's been instances where you can't even like distribute porn. As in like, actual intercourse can't be shown, but there, you can sell like softcore shit. There's a huge taboo around it, but everyone uses VPNs. Everyone uses, there's get around, right? But their, porn is legally banned in Korea. Korea, however, they have a- And why do you think K-pop is like this? Think about that for a second. Why do you think in countries or cultures or religions where it's more repressive, right? Why are they the most freakiest? Hmm? Back in my day, bro, there was a school, there was a bunch of high schools, but then in my, in my area, but then there was this one school called the Christian school. And this high school, as the name suggests, it was a Christian school, very religious. They were not a lot, all the girls there never went to any parties, right? They were all very reserved and repressed to be a good Christian girl. But then at prom after party, when they came over, bro, those girls, everyone knew that the Christian girls were the most freakiest. Because again, exactly, repressed desires. When you don't have a healthy outlet of your desires and you bottle that shit in, it mutates and explodes in a different way. K-pop is basically softcore porn. Whether you like it or not, all these sexy choreographies, all the sexy ladies and dudes doing, you know, suggestive dances. Of course, it's leaning into the Kumer culture, right? Because porn is banned, they gotta figure out different ways they can, you know, <laughs> figure out how to, you know, get off. A ton of other things that can be over-sexualized, such as gacha games. Now, most gacha games are rated as being a 12 plus game or 16 plus, depending on iOS or Google Play stores, such as Azure Lane or Goddess Jesus. of Victory Nike. When games are 18 plus or for adults, they're unable to do advertisement or any promotions on the app store, and they're much harder to find. Mm -hmm. And as many know, marketing is everything. Absolutely. Now comes the and who is your biggest target audience, right? When you make the shit 18 plus, you think like, remember, the biggest audience will always be kids, young adults. Grown ass dudes, for sure. There's gonna be them and they're, they're gonna be the whales, but a bulk. A big demography uh, of people, the audience, right? That have the most free time, that don't do shit, they don't got a job, all they do is wake up and just consume kids, man. Or, and they're much harder to find, and as many know, marketing is everything. Yep. Now comes the star of the show, a game named Blue Archive. Sensei! Oh my god, Sensei, you gobbling on Eerie's feet, bro. Quick little... Quick, quick little advertisement, hold up, hold up. Where am I? Kaka TV Blue Archive. My Blue Archive enjoyers, I have an entire playlist of Blue Archive anime reactions. Go check it out. Sensei literally gobbled Iori in this episode. I can't believe he fucking did that, bro. Holy shit. A 15 plus teen rated game that has a very, very dedicated uh -huh. community. We're yeah. going to have them stuck in the wall. <laughs> yeah, and so, uh, you know, I, I heard that idea and I said, you know what, you can be the employee of the month. Original <laughs> that's amazing. Imagine that's your job, bro. You go into a business meeting, big boy business meeting, and say, all right, guys, revenue's dying for them down for the month. Any, anyone have any suggestions? Boss, I got it. We should put a new lolly. Hear me out in a closed space smushed against the wall. Think about that. Hmm, I think you're cooking. I think you're fucking onto something. Promotion! Let's go for a lunch break, boys. I heard that idea and I said, you know what? You can be the employee of the month. Originally a Nexon game from Korea, it became a worldwide phenomenon. A sp <laughs> Everyone was, whoa, out of respect. Every, the, the blue archive culture literally is everyone just spamming this emote and going, whoa. A worldwide phenomenon, especially in Japan, I wonder why. Let's not get it twisted. Japan's age of consent is very low. There's a huge culture of enjoying lollies and shodas, right? I mean, elusive samurai, I know it's not a lolly show, but... Oh man, the people are loving the shodas recently. The BBL shoda, I got reincarnated as the 7th prince, right? There's definitely an affinity towards that. So dedicated that at the recent Comic Het, which is essentially Japan's Comic Con, they had more Blue Archive art and booths than any other by a large... Wow. Bro, they literally over 2 x it. Hollow Live, Uma Musume is like the furry girl running game, right? Type Moon, we know that. Fate shit, Toho, I think that's like, uh... Actually, I'm not too sure about that. Uh, anytime I see Toho, it's just like, um... 
game where a shitload of bullets are being sprayed and you're trying to dodge this shit and you're trying to attack back, right? Idolmaster, Kankole, Mihoyo, Love Live, Gundam, but Blue Archive on top, man. Margin. Essentially, the plot of the game is you're a sensei or teacher mm -hmm. at a school for a bunch of super powered girls that police the city and deal with threats like gangs or terrorism. Yeah. However, some Cute. of them are dressed a bit. Well, uh. you know. And oh, also, almost all of them are canonically under, under the age of 18. Like, yes. All in high school. Intentionally. They know what they're doing. And it works they tell you specifically some aren't even old enough to play their own game great thanks for leaving oh, no shit. room for doubt on that one it is what it is now the important thing is the grac set their sights on blue archive which would end oh, no. up being their biggest mistake yeah huge huge community effort right they try to go to blue archive and we won and says of blue archive will die for their students so they made the decision to change the age rating to 18 plus because of some of the character designs, so essentially making it an adult game. And it wouldn't mm. be able to do- <laughs> Okay, if you can't read Korean, this is what it says. Muno ga isum. Muno means octopus. <laughs> so 18 plus? So Blue Archive ga hangukeso chongsunyung yung burga in you. Basically, it's just like, this is the reason why Blue Archive is a bad thing for teenagers, okay? For the 18 plus, you have octopus on the ass. But in the 15, you know, Munaga Opsun, Pawiga Chukada. Meaning, like, no, they censored the octopus. Mokchuri Isum. Mokchur? Oh, it's it's like the collar leash, right? So, Mokchuri Opsum. No leash here. <laughs> really? That, that's it? That, th this is your fucking way to make it good? Do much promotion either. But what the GRAC didn't know is that the senseis were united yeah. and would not take it. The sen. <sighs> you know what the saddest thing is? Why can't monkeys unite to bring down the cost of living, inflation? I know that we don't have much control against inflation, but like the average rent, like the fucking average one bedroom apartment in Vancouver being almost like fucking $3,000. Motherfuckers won't do anything. But as soon as the gotcha girls are in danger, everyone fucking unites and makes like world changing policies. Like what the fuck? Sensei is only 5,489 strong signed a petition to the South Korean government Damn. accusing the GRAC of unfair treatment and corruption. Corruption! And asking them to be audited. Anything oh. to aid their students. What they didn't know is they were exactly right. The National Audit Office investigated... It's a hold up. It was a bluff that turned real? So we said, all right, there's some corruption going on there. Audit they ass. But that was like a reach. It's like, oh God, I hope this works out. And then it's like, hold up. There is something going on behind the scenes. ...the GRAC and found that not only were they exaggerating work done and mislabeling games ratings to pretend <gasps> to be working, but there were also accusations of embezzlement. It oh turns my God. out they were... <laughs> Listen, I can say it because I'm Korean. Embezzlement, I think, happens in a lot of Korean companies, bro. A lot of scams, a lot of fucking white-collar crime, 100%. Absolutely. And I don't think that's specific to Korea, but there's a lot of corruption for sure. And the theme of this, of a, of a bunch of people uniting to take down these corporations and suits, that's kind of Blue Archive, man. Right? Season 1, Abido's High School. We got so much fucking debt. And the Kaiser Corp, bro. They're being unfair. The interest rate is too high, right? And we banded together <laughs> Said, fuck you, Mr. Kaiser Corp, and we took him down. Using government funds for Bitcoin mining and laundering the rest. Blue Archive superfans had accidentally uncovered a corrupt government nice. fraud agency. People were fired and prosecuted, and the entire agency's business operations Amazing. were actually suspended for a time. The senseis had taken down the literal rating board for games in their country temporarily. A game I used to play in ins- Ooh. If y'all playing Epic 7 right now, this is the best time to play Epic 7. I love the game. I've been playing it since the beginning. Actually, the reason that I know Genesad is because he's an Epic 7 content creator. I know that's not the only game he's playing, but he has a lot of Epic 7 content. ML Luna, god damn, bro. Right now is the anniversary for Epic 7. Like, this is the best time to get on it if you want to. Same amount of Epic 7 at one point was trying to censor some of its characters or its age rating was actually going to be raised. So, uh, yeah. 
He used to play. No, nah, this, this video was posted one day ago. This dude was literally streaming Epic 7 last night. I guess that rating board was getting in the way of the designs people really craved. And yeah. do we even need to discuss games like Goddess of Victory and Nikkei? Woo. We all know who and what these games cater to, and they're all- <laughs> That is so aggressive, bro. Those are balloons on the screen. It actually looks silly. It's how out of proportion to our body is. All absurdly popular. Finally, something I wanted to mention is even the most popular gacha games made by Hoyoverse have begun mm -hmm. to embrace this behavior. You can't tell me that Honkai Star Rail, Jade's trailer, wasn't oh, yeah. literally just her as a dominatrix dommy mommy with a whip and men in their... Absolutely, right? Jade was literally sitting on a guy that was acting as a fucking... Like a chair, bro. Even before Jade. Just look at Kafka, right? Jing Liu. I know that Jing Liu isn't like that, but the Kafka trailer was, and the way they voice act, trying to be like, dummy mommy. Ugh. I fucking hate that voice acting. I think that's cringe, but clearly they're trying to lean into that audience because a lot of dudes are masochists and they just want to be stepped on by a hot girl. Knees before her sweating. And now with Yun Li, they non-stop focus on her feet in every single shot yep anytime there's a lolly i know that you is not a lolly but younger girls and lolly characters there's always a tendency to show their feet that's the pattern of behavior over and time after time right they realize that well shit it's a lolly or a young you know girl without titties or ass what can we highlight toes grippers thought they can even her old animation shows them for no reason at all yep there's no and that's not that and that's just the toes armpits armpits toes right there's different things that they can highlight if they're lacking in the assets because they just aren't fucking grown-ass women yet no reason at all there's no way it's a coincidence then look at zenless zone zero you have zhu yan's trailer we will watch this trailer after this video. I heard the trailer went fucking crazy, bro. And a third of it is focused on her massive ass. And then also Jane Doe's butt jiggles when she walks. And also look at Nicole. I mean, just her design overall is really sexual. Even yeah, I mean, there's a whole fucking tr the drama about how they nerfed Nicole's titties and people are fucking uh, grabbing their witch for I mean, pitchforks, bro. Even the largest gotcha company's games are... Look at that. You think that Nicole is the highlight here? Did Look at that arc, bro. That pose is nasty. Largest gotcha company's games are embracing the Coomer audience more. Now, what do all these incidents have in common? Sex sells. People want busty girls. People want big boob, big ass. Girls want hot husbandos. Gotcha games are going to get more horny. And it makes sense. That's where the money's at. They all contribute to having games become more sexualized and cater towards the Coomer audience. These were just some examples, but there's honestly plenty others. However, there is one game that mm. transcends all of this. Oh yeah? It goes beyond to another plane. Let's go. I hope you enjoyed the video. What Thanks game? So much for watching. Wait, you didn't tell me. Am I? I'm not, I, I, I don't know what the game this is. I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm less of a degenerate. Than Jenna. I don't know what game this is. Maybe one of you guys can let me know. I hope you are, are these just like hentai games that you get on a fucking random ad? I don't know. Video. Thanks a bunch for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel and I'll be Hey, please, guys, go check out Jenna's that channel. If you play Epic 7, there's a lot of Epic 7 content there too. But give me a like, give me a sub, but great video. I love videos just talking about gotcha anime, just like you know, audience behavior, the psychologies of people. But at the end of the day, you know, this isn't going to change. People want, you know, hot girls. It just makes sense, right? Even look at the downfall of Concord. The fucking characters that just look like ass. People want to play attractive characters, right? They want to see attractive people. Gaming and, and consuming media, it's all about, you know, escapism and having some sort of fantasy. So, of course, it makes sense. And, man, if anything, it just kind of opened my eyes of how much of a loser that these people are, that they think they got cucked. Like, if you straight up feel like you got cucked by a video game boy because your favorite waifu is having dialogues, like, that is such a self-report to a nux level. I cannot even comprehend the level of, like, loser behavior this is. But hey, that's it for me. I'll see you next time.